in any distributed system there's always one critical truth which is that not every component runs at the same speed your kafka producers might be publishing thousands of messages per second but what happens when your consumers or downstream systems can't keep up that's where back pressure comes into play back pressure is a concept that describes how systems handle overload especially when there's an imbalance between input and processing speed in kafka it's not just a nice to have feature it's a fundamental part of how kafka stays resilient under load think of it like traffic if too many cars try to enter a highway at once you get congestion similarly if too many messages are produced but not consumed quickly enough kafka has to manage the pressure building up in the pipeline otherwise it risks running out of memory disk space or even crashing downstream services in this video we're going to break down what back pressure looks like in kafka how it impacts producers consumers brokers and what mechanisms kafka uses to keep things under control like producer retries batching consumer lag and retention policies understanding back pressure isn't just about tuning performance it's about building stable scalable kafka pipelines that can survive the real world chaos of production systems <laughs> So let's break down Kafka back pressure. What is it? So back pressure occurs when consumers cannot keep up with the rate of messages being produced in a Kafka topic. This leads to a growing queue of unprocessed messages which can result in increased memory usage, especially if the messages are buffered in memory, disk storage build up if messages are retained for longer than expected, and consumer lag where consumers fall behind causing delays in real time processing. Now Kafka is well equipped to handle this and Kafka provides several mechanisms to mitigate back pressure. Let's go through them one by one. The first one is message retention. Unlike traditional queue based systems where slow consumers can cause message loss, Kafka persists messages for a configurable amount of time. You also get access to retention policies that ensure that messages are not lost even if consumers are slow. The second thing is consumer lag monitoring. Kafka exposes metrics to monitor consumer lag, which is the difference between the last committed offset and the latest produced message. If consumer lag increases, it indicates back pressure and more consumers can be added to the consumer group to balance the load. We also have consumer groups and parallel processing. Kafka allows multiple consumers to read from the same topic in parallel via consumer groups. If back pressure occurs, you can add more consumers to the group, which enables horizontal scaling. flow control and rate limiting now if consumers cannot keep up kafka brokers apply rate limiting to prevent overwhelming them kafka throttles producers dynamically to prevent message production from outpacing consumer processing the next thing we have is batch processing and fetch size tuning consumers can process messages in batches instead of one at a time there are two parameters available to us fetch.min.bytes and fetch.max.wait.ms These parameters control batch size and waiting time to optimize consumer performance. Compression to reduce load. Kafka supports message compression like Snappy, LZ4, ZSTD to reduce the amount of data sent over the network and stored on the disk. Finally, you have stream processing. If using Kafka streams or Flink, back pressure is managed via windowing techniques like tumbling or sliding windows, buffering like temporary storage until processing speeds up. or async processing with stateful checkpoints so in today's video we broke down an important concept which is back pressure in kafka and we learned how kafka actually handles it now this is a very important interview question and not only that it also helps you in the real world when you're actually setting up systems where you might observe back pressure if you like such concepts and would like to dive deeper into system design then i have some great news for you I'm starting a new engineering leadership cohort which is meant for people aiming for engineering leadership positions. It starts on 1st June and we learn system design, cloud architecture, data architecture and all the awesome advanced topics you need to learn to prepare for an engineering leadership role. There's a link to the application form in the description of this video. Please fill it out if you're interested and we'll check if you're a good fit for the cohort then we'll take things forward. There are only a few seats and it's a great opportunity to learn with other like-minded people. Now if you're watching this video after the 1st of June 2025, don't worry. I plan to have these cohorts every few months, so feel free to fill the form. Also, don't forget to subscribe for such high-quality content. 
I'll see you in the next one.